All right, everyone, good evening. Welcome to the Heart Smarts February Heart Month finale. My name is Dr. Nasolo Teddy. I am the creator and director of the Heart Smarts program. We are so excited to have all of you joining us this evening. Uh, before we begin the program, we just have some quick announcements. As always, please share in the chat uh, where you're joining us from. Welcome to all new Heart Smarts guests. Um, tell us how you're doing today, anything you'd like to share, any questions you have for Chef Babette or Khadija Karim or anything at all that you'd like to share with us in the chat and um, we will get started. So again, this is the Heart Smarts February Heart Month finale and we have had an amazing um, Heart Month this year. We started off with Dr. Columbus Baptiste who shared his book Selfish with us for our kickoff as well as Lisa Smith who told us how we are getting in our own way in terms of our health and wellness goals and we closed off our our kickoff event with Darren and Gloria Hagwood, who taught us about the power of breath and sound healing. Uh, we moved on to have our part two workshop um, with Lisa Smith, who also um, shared with us some more tips and tools in terms of how to overcome any of the things that uh, may be getting in our way of reaching our health goals. We went on to meet with Dr. Tumi Johnson and we learned about the power of movement and dance in terms of health and wellness. And last week we had our session with Jamard Banks um, where he talked to us about the power of herbs um, in healing our body. Uh, for tonight, we have two amazing guests. Uh, we have Khadija Karim and Chef Babette and I will introduce them more formally in a moment. For Heart Smarts March, 2024, um, we'll have our Women's History Month series, and March is also Colon Cancer Awareness Month, so a lot of our presenters will be talking about gut health, colon health, and things like that. I want to share that if you registered for the February events, I will send you uh, the link for the March events, and if you're not interested, you can just write back unsubscribe. I think that's the easiest way to make sure that everyone who is interested gets it, and then if you're not, you can just unsubscribe to the listserv. But next Monday, uh, we have Dr. Tumi Johnson for part two. And then the following week, we have Samantha Salmon, who will be talking about brain health as it relates to whole foods, plant-based nutrition. Uh, the week after that, we have Chef Brandy, who will be doing a presentation, one on raw living foods and another on plant-based foods, all for um, gut health. And then finally, our finale for Women's History Month will be Dr. Michael Greger, and um, we read How Not to Die last year, and he has a new book called How Not to Age, so he will be joining us uh, to discuss that as well. As I shared with you all, and Dr. Baptiste really shared with you, there is a conference uh, in about a month from now, and I will be one of the presenters there. It's the Health Equity and Lifestyle Project Conference, and this is just a fraction of the speakers. This is going to be an amazing event with all of the top Black plant-based doctors, uh, practitioners, health educators, all in one space. And this will be happening in Huntsville, Alabama um, from March 24th to 26th. The reason I'm bringing it up today is the early bird special for pricing ends on March 1st. I think if you're able to attend, I would highly suggest it. I think this is going to be an awesome gathering of just positive energy and learning more about the benefits of a whole foods plant-based lifestyle, especially for reversing and preventing certain chronic health conditions. Um, Baxter Montgomery, Dr. Baxter Montgomery is going to be there. And if you go for no other reason, I think Chef Babette will agree that we should all be there to see and meet him. And so, um, yep, if you're able to attend that, please uh, check out the website. It's thehelpconference.org. All right, everyone. So the main reason that we are all gathered here this evening is for our special guest. Um, our first guest, Khadija Karem, also known as the CMOS Queen, joined us last year and shared some amazing information about the benefits of CMOS and um, the, all the programs that she was offering at that time. She's an actress, producer, health activist, and founder of her new initiative, Earth and Sea Wellness, which specializes in herbs, teas, tonics, skin care, and other amazing nutritional supplements for total body healing. Um, she's going to share with us all of her uh, new endeavors that she's doing, as well as possibly tell us about her movie uh, that we can watch as well. And then we have Chef Babette, who was our keynote speaker for Heart Month last year and will, is our finale speaker this year. And I thought it would be awesome to have her as the finale speaker because I think after hearing everyone else present, we need to put an exclamation point on everything that we learned this month. And there is no better person to do it 
to let us know the power of plants and the power of foods and healing than Chef Babette. So at 73, Chef Babette Davis is living her best life. She is a world-class chef, fitness expert, motivational speaker, and owner of the plant-based restaurant Stuff I Eat. She has been featured in Essence Magazine, The Tamron Hall Show, Insecure, and various health documentaries, even one that we watched last week called They're Trying to Kill Us. So she is amazing, and we're so grateful to have both of them uh, join us this evening. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and I'm just going to ask you all to come off mute as we give them a warm, heart smarts welcome um, before we begin. So welcome. Chef Babette, and welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much. Welcome. 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 Both of you to just introduce yourselves a little bit more than I did and share anything that you would like to kind of to set the foundation and intention for this evening. And so you both are able to unmute yourselves and you can come off mute and share. So um, I guess I'll go first. You want to go first? Go, go. <laughs> so as she said, you guys, it's so good to be back with you. My name is Khadija Kareem. And, um, you know, what else can I add that she hadn't already said, but that, yes, I have been um, non-meat for the last 30 plus years. Um, I've uh, studied herbs, I've been a nutritionist, a herbalist, um, and I have basically uh, spent my life trying to help people heal naturally. Um, that's, that's my purpose. My passion, of course, is like she said, is that I would have been an actress also for most of my life. And um, I finally wrote, produced, and starred in my own feature film. And so I'm excited about that. And so I just have been juggling both of these things lately. So I've been like, whoa, it's been a whirlwind. But it's been a great one because um, each of the things you know, are very near and dear to my heart. And each of the things are hopefully um, being able to touch people in a way that I've always wanted to. So I am just so happy to be here. And of course, we're going to talk more about it, but I'm going to turn it over to Chef Babette <laughs> and let her talk about herself. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, first of all, it's so unbelievable to be here with all of you guys this evening. Thank you so very much. This should be fun. Mm -hmm. Um, I, um, started my journey, um, back in 1990, uh, I was blessed to meet my, my husband, Rondell Davis, and, um, he pretty much turned me on to a lifestyle that, um, pretty much saved my life. Um, I, um, she, she pretty much told you exactly what I'm into. Uh, but the main thing that I, I think is really important for us um, to talk about this evening is the fact that we are on a human journey. This is a, a human experience, if you will. And even though longevity is awesome, you know, it's great to say, oh, my grandma lived till she was 116. And that's great if grandma can live to be 116 and still be upright. But quality of life is what I really want to speak on today. And there are certain things that we all need to do to do our part to bring a good quality of life to ourselves on this human journey. So that's kind of what I think I really want to wrap about today, especially being 73 years old and having lived this, not read about it, but yes. lived it since uh, 2000 and when did I say 1990 oh lord I am 73 huh anyway <laughs> all right everyone but I think if you want to rub your ears or you know make sure your computer is working she did say 73 yes. years old and I think we need to continue to process that as we go through the evening and so um chef Babette I was watching your interview today with Dr. Bobby Jones and oh, I think for Bobby many Price. of you Bobby Price, sorry, Dr. Bobby Price. Yeah. And for any of you who think that your story or your background or anything like that is 
holding you back from making your health changes because you need the unhealthy food kind of to handle what you've been through in life. You need to watch that interview and see what Chef Babette has been through and how she's been able to overcome. And that really none of us have an excuse for using food as a crutch um, for anything. And we really have to do the healing work. And so I wanna ask both of you, if you can share just briefly, how did you get to this space of being a proponent and an advocate for plant-based nutrition and plant-based healing um, without perhaps telling your whole story, maybe a synopsis of how you got to this point? Go ahead, Kadeesh. Well, well, for me, um, so, you know, I think when, when uh, as I said, 30 plus years ago, when I became uh, plant-based was because it was out of a need. I just had my son and, um, you know, and he was dealing with a lot of challenges that I was now going to have to face as a young mom. And I went through a lot of depression. And so for me, um, when I met a lady who had a health ministry, um, she uh, was telling me that plant life was peaceful. And so I should eat more plants to have more peace, you know? Um, so I was like, oh, okay, you know? So that is kind of what started me on the journey of uh, eating plant uh, foods because I needed that. And it did help a lot. You know, I didn't realize that it would so much because she said, you know, of course, with um, animals that, um, we don't know how they're killed. And so they have emotions and everything just like we do. And so when they're killed and they have fear and all that, that gets locked in their meat. And then that's what we take on or any of those things. And so it made a whole lot of sense to me at the time. And like I said, I was in search of something else because what was happening in my life right now, no telling where I would have turned because it felt so heavy and so dark for me, you know? Um, so plants saved my life. <laughs> I would definitely say that because, you know, it did, it, it seemed like it lifted me, um, it lifted me up, you know? Um, and so it started out a little rough because just eating uh, fruits and vegetables, I was like, uh, I miss taste. I miss seasonings. I miss, uh, you know, but she was like, you're doing it all wrong. I was like, well, what do you mean? So in how I began was that I started with substitutions, which basically helped me to get rid of the meat by substituting with um, foods that were plant-based, you know, even though they might've been the still like the fake meats or whatever, but it helped me to transition and then also help my taste buds to get to a place to where I could then receive to eat that way and then once I got on a a rhythm I just started like this is my way of life this is my new way of life and so then I didn't have to have the the fake meats or whatever I I you know I actually could just eat plants and fruits and be okay because I knew now how to make them I knew how to season them I knew how to do all kinds of things to them you know so yeah that's that's how it started for me well, with myself, and if any of you have ever heard my story, you know that in terms of being introduced to plant-based or veganism um, happened when I met Rondo Davis, and that was in 1990. Um, we were married in 1992, but the very first date, this man put me to the test in terms of exercising and uh, introduced me to what I like to call my first vegan meal. Um, but the, what I learned, um, initially th that was so important was that knowledge is power. And, and there are too many times we get ahead of ourselves. I, I believe, uh, uh, um, uh, making the decision to go plant-based is great, but please have a full understanding as to why you're doing this. Make it make sense to you that it's now becomes a part of you. You totally get it. When I became plant-based, it I wasn't thinking about nary an animal on this planet, trust me, love me some chicken. As a matter of fact, when I first came became plant-based, I pulled into to, uh, Popeyes and got it, got in the line, and some said, You ain't eat this, you don't eat this no more. <laughs> I had but Popeye still smelled good back then. I had just stopped. Popeye's was still smelling good. 
But I, I got out of line and I kept it moving. And after a period of time and feeling better than I'd ever felt before, because I also had to learn how to combine my food properly. There's a way that you eat food. It, it's like every time we go over to Mudia's house for a barbecue, we always got the big old giant fruit bowl. It got scoops of watermelon, cantaloupe. Y'all know y'all, every last one of y'all know what I'm talking about, that big old fruit bowl. After we done ate barbecue butt, and everything, everything else, potato salad and all that. Then we sit around and pile watermelon and all the fruit on top of that. And we get sick. We wind up having to take tons. We're, we're miserable and we don't quite understand why. Or at least that is what I experienced. Poor digestion. And the reason that the digestion was so lousy is because I did not know how to combine the food I was eating. It's okay to say that you're plant-based, but you can mess up a plant-based diet as well. So um, knowledge is power. And, and once I, he gave me Fit for Life by Harvey and Marilyn Diamond and then the Mucusless Diet Healing System by Professor Arnold Eric. I only, I want y'all to understand I read them books because a brand new man gave me the books and I didn't want to come off like a jerk and not read the books. So I read the book. They were his personal autograph books by the author. So I had to finish the books, but it was the best thing I ever did in my life because it really got me started on a journey and I am still on that journey today. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. And so as we talk about um, the idea of knowledge is power, uh, something that both of you say is that ignorance is killing our community and that some people, no matter what information you give them, are going to push back and perhaps talk about the grandmother who smokes a pack of cigarettes a day and is still alive <laughs> and the person who ate all the things and never got sick. Um, what do you say to that, the idea of ignorance killing our community? And for those people who have come to all of the Heart Smarts events, but they have one foot in and one foot out, kind of like the food has a hold on them, what would you say to them about how ignorance might be impacting them? Um, I would say because I, I've had people to say, oh, you eat eating all that healthy stuff, then you're going to go outside and get hit by a car or you're going to get hit by a bus or whatever, you know, or somebody say they smoking. And just like you said, the grandma, they're still smoking. But like uh, Chef said, it's quality of life, you know. Now, I always say we all have an appointed time that God has decided. That is something that we cannot change. That is our appointed time. But within that time that I do have, I would much prefer to be feeling good, be out, be enjoying life, as opposed to being in a hospital, being in the bed all the time, being, you know, can't move around, you know, those kinds of things, because I did not feed my body the proper nutrition to be able to be, to live and have a, 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 a fulfilling life. So with that, I just said, it just comes down to choice and it comes down to, you know, how do you want to live your life? You know, chef is 73 years old. She over here, you know, press bench press and everything like that. Okay. Well, I want to live like that. I'm 73, you know, much prefer to do that than to have not put in the work, uh, for prevention, because that's what we're going to talk about is prevention. These kinds of things that you eat and do for your body is to prevent things so that when you get to the ages that are older, that you can still move around and, and take care of yourself. That's so, how I feel. So important. Well, I also believe that um, because we have been created in a human form, um, we're on, we live on a planet. Now, I, I have no knowledge of living anywhere else but the planet Earth. And I do understand that our decisions one by one also have consequences. Um, 
yes, we are the species that walks upright and makes all the decisions for everybody else on the planet, not ever taking into consideration most of the times what consequences our decisions have as we live on this planet. And we have a multitude of consequences that are actually happening right today. Global warming is not a joke. And the, the uh, consumption of animal products, especially the way that the United States in particular decide they want to make sure and manufacture them animals for you, the way the, the things that they are doing right now is ruining the planet and every species on it. When you don't have a home, you've made some lousy decisions, especially when you are the reason the home no longer exists. So it ain't just about you, human species. It is about the whole. We are a part of all of it. It ain't just about the human. That's my take on it. Excellent. And so to wrap up that kind of train of thought of questions, you both talk a lot about self-love and self-care. And oftentimes when people are not eating well, they are not connecting it with self-hate perhaps or lack of self-love if we're to tone it down a bit. And so as we come out of February, the month of love, how do you all interpret the idea of self-love as it relates to eating but exercise as well and other forms of self-care and connect that to the concept of gratitude also and the idea of being able to do things as opposed to having to do them. What are your thoughts on that? Um, first of all, I, I would just say that one, you know, and I, and I know we, we're talking about a lot of things about self-love, how to eat and all that, but I'm human just like you guys are. And so that's why I wanted to just say this because I'm not 100% all the time myself, right? I don't think any of us are. But what we have to remember is forgiveness of ourselves first. You know, forgive yourself. You know, I, ideally, I would love to like never fall off the wagon. I would love to like, you know, keep it this way. Don't have that candy. Don't have that, that, that cookie and just keep it straight. And, you know, and I'd be good. I would love to, that's not realistic. So <laughs> I don't want you to think that, that, you know, we are just on this particular soapbox and, and you, and you, cause I think that that's what happens a lot of times is that as humans, we feel like, well, I can't achieve what they're achieving. So since I can't achieve what they're achieving, it makes me um, feel like, well, I just, I'm just gonna grab this. I'm gonna just be here. And that causes more depression, which I think is what ultimately starts to affect the things that you tend to gravitate to, to, give yourself comfort you know um back in the day i used to smoke cigarettes i used to have glass of wine when i put my kids to sleep i was like oh lord i made it through a day thank <laughs> god i made it through the day and i have me a glass of wine but see that glass of wine and you know and th this is how i would justify it i had american a uh, native what was it american spirits or whatever what, what m the point is it was supposed to be just tobacco so that's how i justified it but at the end of the day it was a cigarette okay it was a cigarette and what i realized is that as i was trying to you know, move through my healing journey and my health journey. And, and I, I was like, I can't keep going to the bottom <laughs> when I, when I'm feeling bad, I have to find something else that could give me comfort in those places where I'm reaching for the cigarette or the wine. And so for me, it's starting each day with prayer. It's even meditation you know, for me, because when I center myself, I, and, and this is the thing that I didn't realize all along is that I had anxiety, you know, I, now the term is anxiety disorder, right? I didn't know that that was a disorder. I just knew that I would always have this anxiousness. I didn't understand what this anxiousness was that I always felt. And so that was what I was trying to like calm down. So prayer and meditation for me helps in the morning for me to center myself, helps me with breathing, 
deep breathing each day. And so then it's like, I start the day different. And when I start the day different, then I make much better choices during the day. I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I And I, I love that. <laughs> I love that you said when none of us are running a hundred. <laughs> no, we are not a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I have my own personal challenges. I I was highly addicted to refined sugar. Um, all through life, pretty much. I still have a very uh su big sweet tooth. Um, so even when even when I do this, when I my juices, I might have to use an extra ten apples in mine to make sure it's sweet because <laughs> I ain't trying to drink no jar of wheat grass, but. <laughs> When it comes to self-love and self-care, it, it it's so, so very important because as I speak about our planet home and every other species, love starts with self. It is impossible for you to truly love outside of you if you don't love you. And loving you means really, really, really caring for yourself. And that is why I say knowledge is power. There are a lot of things that we ingest nowadays and we think we're doing okay. We think we're doing good by it. But there's information that we need to understand that nowadays there, so many of us have gotten off of a, a, a life food diet, if you will, to a more processed vegan diet. Mm -hmm. And um, when, when we're eating a lot of processed food, for me, I, I don't feel like I am loving me because of the knowledge that I have gained and my understanding about what processed food is and does. I just don't really trust everybody that has hands on my food. And so I do know that an apple is an apple, mm -hmm. but I'm not quite sure if you bring me a box with two paragraphs on there with a whole bunch of words that I can't pronounce. I'm just not quite sure if I trust all of that. So a part of loving me is being very cautious and careful with what I choose to ingest, what I choose to share. I have a restaurant. If I'm not going to eat that, I am not getting ready to give that to you. Mm -hmm. It is my ethics that are called into play when I am selling food, when I am sharing a cuisine with anybody that crosses the threshold and stuff I eat. I have to make sure that I would ingest every morsel I give to you. Mm -hmm. So that when, when, I, when I talk about knowledge, you have to understand what certain foods are doing to us. I don't, I don't care how many documentaries you got to watch. It's one out there that's so cold-blooded right now. It's called uh, Eating Our Way to Extinction. Mm -hmm. That one documentary right there is going to change the minds of a whole bunch of people. You understand? You can call yourself plant-based. You can call yourself vegan. You can call yourself whatever you want to call yourself. But make sure that when you eat a meal, you understand how to combine that food. You understand how to uh, have the best results in terms of digestion. I don't know about y'all, but I had a rough, rough time. I had the biggest belches of anybody on the planet Earth. I know I know because I could not digest my food. I was a hot mess. And for the only species on the planet to have to get medication to digest their food, that is not correct. You know, you know that that is not correct because the intelligence that created all of this gave us a specific diet. That's why you got teeth like you got. And, and people, got, I posted, somebody posted a clip from a, from a, uh, an interview I did. And I said, I can't jump on top of a cow and tear it apart and eat it right on the spot that ain't my diet. And you know, then meat eaters was ready to come and slaughter me for saying that. But it is the truth. 
I don't have to do nothing with an apple but pick it and eat it. If I talk about the life in food, I had people attack me because I said something about have something live on your plate. And they, if you, if you pick an apple, it's dead. Well, you tell me you get protein from a dead cow ass. Now, I, which is it? Is it dead and you don't get nothing? Or is it a, what is it? Because I do know that the nutrients and the fiber that I get from that apple equates life to me. That's what it means to me. If I can take the seed of that apple and plant it and it begin to grow, that says life to me. There is something in that apple, in those peanuts, in the, if I'm not allergic to this stuff, in that live food that the intelligence put here for me to nourish myself. I don't just eat because I'm hungry. I don't know. Did I say too much? I sure mm -hmm. was saying. No. Anyway. No, you preaching the that. That's what we need to hear. I ain't trying to preach. <laughs> but it's necessary, though. Well, and no. we welcome it. <laughs> and with that being said, I know you all just finished a uh, cleanse of sorts, a juicing um, cleanse fast. And we also, some of us um, in the Heart Smarts program I was sharing with you, finished a 40 day juice cleanse last week. And I feel like we are forever changed, those of us who did it, because we can't stop juicing. So you would have thought that we would have come out of it and been so happy to stop it, but we are still doing it. Um, I'm still doing it the same way we were in the um, fast because I feel so good from doing it. And we're so grateful to have kind of um, added this new habit to our repertoire of things that we do. And so can you speak a little bit to the power of juicing cleanses, detoxing, and all of that? Um, sure. So yeah, we we did a 30-day detox cleanse and the and that was with no fruits, no sugars, because um, as she was talking about, you know, when you you know, once you uh uh have sugar, then you're gonna want to have more sugar whether that's fruit, which is also sugars or just, you know, refined sugars. So this fast was to use um, the herbs because um, a lot of the herbs that I have right now are root herbs. And so what root herbs do and the ones that I chose are the bitters, which um, if you know anything about the bitters, the more bitter the herb, the more potent the herb. The only way you can truly cleanse your liver and your organs is with bitter herbs, not sweet. Sweet does not heal or cure. It, it helps with the digestion and it also helps to cleanse the actual organs. So our 30-day cleanse, we did the herbal tea. Um, we have I had the antiviral tonic, which has got like over 20 root herbs in it. It also helps to cleanse all the herbs, I mean, all the um, organs from head to toe. And having that reset is so important because like Chef said, like you said, you know, when we're going through our lives and, you know, we get back on our regular patterns, you know, um, then we, we get past the juices and we get past the things that like you just experienced for the last 30 days, uh, 40 days, or we experienced for the last 30 days. So you have to do those resets. And, but the thing is, as long as you can do them at least twice or three times a year, that's good for your body, you know, get the clean out. And then, you know, even if you go back to eating things, at least you're cleaning out. Hopefully it helps you to make better choices when you do start to eat again. So hopefully all of the juices that you guys have done, you know, like you said, you want to stick with it. Stick with it as long as you can stick with it, you know. And if you're going to go into a raw diet after that, then that's even better because it's just going to help you transition into that much easier. Well, I kind of agree with uh, Khadija 100%. And um I've been juicing for quite a number of years now. It's just part of the lifestyle. Um, I'm in a restaurant. I got a big industrial juicer. So that's just something I make sure that I have available for my husband, available for my husband and myself. And it and it also is a part of self-love uh, as, as far as I'm concerned. Um, the amount of uh, nutrients I get, and this is a small jar uh, of juice, 
but the amount of nutrients I get, I cannot ingest uh, uh, whole fruits and vegetables enough to even get me what I'm getting out of that small jar. Um, so it's important to me. I love the tonic and 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 the the earth and sea wellness. Man, the tonics. If you don't, if yes, sea moss is amazing, but those tonics and the tea, the herbs are just incredible, and it's something that. I gotta, well, I gotta get some more from from my girl because I've I've run out. Um, but you do want to keep those. I mean, there sometimes, um, I I I fail, I fail miserably when it comes to ingesting enough water. That's that is my challenge. Water. I'm drinking all kind of stuff, but ain't nothing like H two O for the human. Water is important. Mm -hmm. So I uh, started feeling, now I cracked my knee about in December. Uh, yeah, like two days before my 73rd birthday. I got overzealous. I didn't stay in my lane. And this too, I, I was so, I told Khadija, I really wanted to share this with you guys today. Um, Self-love, self-care also means staying in your lane. I got overzealous in the gym. Uh, you could even say I was showing out a little bit, maybe. I mean, you know, I'm, 70, I'm almost 73. I can do all kinds of stuff in the gym. I got off of a 45-minute spin, and that little crazy boy said to me, you should go get on the treadmill. Now, I ain't been on the treadmill, I could actually say, in a couple of years. I hadn't been on the treadmill. But when I used to spin years ago, I'd get out there, get on treadmill, and I'd do me an eight-minute mile, no, no biggie. But that was probably, probably about 10, 12 years ago. I'm, I'm two days before I'm about to be 73. I hop on that treadmill. I turn it up to seven. I'm getting it. And then I see my trainer, and I go in the training room, and I'm just doing everything. And I'm not, I'm not even paying attention to him that day. I'm just showing out. I'm doing balance, lifting weights, doing all kinds of stuff. Got to work and bent down to get a spider web off the wall. And my right knee said, snap, crackle, pop. That was two days before my 73rd birthday. So I became a cripple for my 73rd birthday. So I've been dealing with that because I can't, I, doctor, I don't mean this at you. It's just doctors. Some doctors just tell you stupid stuff. So I tried to heal the knee myself. I did pretty good. However, I thought I was having a challenge because sometimes I get a little stupid with not having enough water. But I had just finished a 12-day water fast. I wasn't getting it and my, my back was feeling weird. It didn't have nothing to do with water. I think it's sciatica. I think that's what happened. But the bottom line is, I'm 73. Yes, I'm healthy. But sometimes I have to use common love sense and stay in my lane. And sometimes, if I don't know what is wrong with me, I just need to go see an MD to find out what is wrong with me. That too. Is practicing self love and self care. So I just kind of wanted to add that in. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that and giving us that visual of what happened. And so to continue off of that in terms of exercise, and Chef Babette, you said it, you just show off on Instagram with all of your different exercises, and we just watched with our mouths open. Um, and just are in amazement of all the things that you're able to do. And last time you were here, you told us that we have to do what works for us and mm -hmm. not try to do perhaps what you're doing or what someone else is doing, but kind of really focus on our goals and what works for us. Um, so mm -hmm. for both of you, what advice would you have for people who say they just don't like to exercise? Um, it's not their thing. Perhaps the nutrition part is easier for them to do, but the daily movement, the consistency of it, perhaps they got their outfit together on um, January 1st, they wore it, went to the gym, and the gym hasn't seen them again um, since that day. So for those people who do not like to exercise, what do you say about the importance of it, of having a regular exercise routine, 
And um, also the idea that it's never too late to start knowing that for you, Chef Babette, you began at 40, really with your um, routine. Khadija, I'm going to speak to this right quick. Go ahead. I um I do understand that because I get lazy too. And, you know, I'm not going to come on here and try to act like I'm, no, mm -mm. I'm y'all, okay? I get lazy and that is the only reason I normally get myself a trainer because they motivate me more. They push me a little bit more, um, especially when I get in the gym. However, you were not created to do nothing. That human body needs to move. Mm -hmm. We have, we are such exceptional, exceptional, such an exceptional species with all of the things, everything we can put the human body through. It's just incredible. I watch gymnasts right now and I'm just absolutely amazed. I'm looking at these kids thinking, is this some AI generated people? Because it's just amazing to me what they can do. When you, when I get to be 90, y'all, I desire, this knee going to be fixed, but I desire to be able to get in the bathtub and get myself out without the help of the fire department. I, 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 don't, I, 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 I can't think about being stuck in the bathtub. And, I, and, and if I go down on the floor, I want to be able to get up. I don't want to have to hold on to everything and have somebody come and hold, hold me up. Now, that's not to say anything about us. My mother was there, but that is what changed my mind. Her human journey, her experience, her lack of double knee replacement, and her lack of being having mobility is what made me say, she kept saying, you just wait, you know, you just wait. That's what she kept saying. And I kept thinking to myself, if there's any other way, I am making another choice. And so please, for all of us who do not move, ain't nobody asking you to go out there and do no eight minute plank or no 100 pushups. I started with one pushup. You can get on your kitchen counter and do a push-up. You start with one and then move on to two. And you ain't never got to leave the comfort of your home. Do something, though, to stay strong enough and to do something with that core. Core strength is so very important for us. Mm -hmm. And if you can just, that core, if you can just do anything, but try to make it habitual, even if you ain't in front of a whole bunch of people at the gym trying to bust your knee or have back trouble. <laughs> Go, Kadisha. Um, so I was just gonna say, because I am not I am not in that gym like like Chef is. Okay. So I probably am the other side of y'all, right? I like exercise, but sometimes I don't like going past anything that's going to hurt or uncomfortable, any of that. So what I do, but I do like to walk. So it's a park right across the street from where I live. Mm -hmm. I just go and walk around. And, you know, when I just want to just keep it easy, I just walk around. I'm not power walking. I am literally just walking, right? Yeah. Um, and as long as, because like she said, you do have to move your body because a body in motion stays in motion. Okay. And so, especially as we get older now, I don't know if you guys know, I'm 54. Okay. Oh, I, I, let me take this back. I'll be 54 on March 24th. Okay. <laughs> but, but even in that, it's like, you know, I still have to make sure that I'm moving and stretching because again, like I said before, prevention, because if I start now, just making sure I still stretch things and, and keep things, you know, mobile and, and moving, then uh, I have friends that are starting to get like, you know, stiff in the hips and, and having to get re hip replacements and things like that because of not stretching and not moving. So 
like I said, I am not in there. I'm not doing the treadmill. I'm definitely not doing it on seven. <laughs> um, I am not, you know, in there doing all the weights, although I do still have to do some weight training because you do need some resistance as you get older. You do need to do some. But if I got a five pound um, weight, that's good enough for me. OK, like she says, stay in your lane, do what works for you. And just find the balance. And the other thing that I do too is that, you know, now I'm on you. I'm I'm an active person. I'm moving all the time just with regular life, regular work, going, you know, going to the car, whatever. I just try to make the steps that I do count. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I'm if I have to do laundry, you know, then you know, that's picking up and this, I just make that maybe a squat. You know, I just try to make the things that I am doing count. So at the end of the day, it's really done turned into a workout, you know, but it's not mentally, I'm not going to work out. And see, and I don't do good with trainers. She, the, I don't like nobody telling me what to do. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, just, I shut down. I, I've, I've learned that about myself. I shut down. So I can't do good. I don't do well with trainers. For me, I know if I want to stop, I need to be able to stop. I don't need anybody pushing me past. I want to stop. Cause I'm listening to my body. They can't hear it. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so anyway, I just say, just find the balance, you know, do the things in your own life, whatever you're doing, just make those steps count. And I think that you'll still keep, keep your body moving the way it needs to. Excellent. And so next question for both of you, there's been comments in the chat about both of your skin and how it just looks amazing and how amazing both of you look for your age. And so do you wanna share what your tips are, secrets are for the beautiful skin that you have and also how um, Earth and Sea Wellness plays a role in that as well? Take it away, Khadija. So first of all, um, the reason why Earth and Sea Wellness is just so amazing and why uh, Chef and I have, have partnered to just you know bring these amazing products to you is because we both have the same mission statement. You know, mm -hmm. um, we both understand the things that we put in our body also translates onto your skin. You know, um, I always tell people when they ask me that skin is something that's an inside situation that also comes out on the outside. So the first thing that you should know is that what controls the skin, the skin is our largest organ, right? So the liver is what cleanses the blood. The blood is a condition of the skin. So when I was going back and talking about the bitters and the things that cleanses the liver, then will in turn cleanses the blood, then in turn promotes healthy glowing skin. So that's the things on the inside. So we have our purity tea, which helps to cleanse those. Um, of course, you know, the sea moss is always excellent for hydration and um, giving you all the vitamins and minerals that your body needs on the inside so that that promotes the, the health and skin on the outside. We also have, which um, Babette uses this as well. You guys have probably seen the vegan sea moss body and face butters. So anything that I have in the store, I use, she uses, I use it for at least two years before I even put it out there so I can make sure that I can put my stamp of approval on it, okay? So these are all, all natural products. You know, again, I always say that anything you put on your skin, you should be able to eat. So just like this is a green tea mint. Let me put my glasses on because I'm trying to be funny, okay? Um, this one has, it's infused with kiwi, mushroom, cornflower, peppermints, and spirulina. Okay. Those are basically I'm feeding my skin. So that's how I think about it. When I, I have my wash regimen, um, I also follow it up with our green coffee bean oil, which is from Brazil, green coffee beans in their natural state. Well, coffee beans in their natural state are green. And so this is cold pressed. So green coffee bean is excellent for antioxidants, fine lines, wrinkles, um, 
And um, and then, you know, you can use some of the butter on top of it. You have your night routine. You put that on. I know, Chef, she wears this underneath her makeup. I do that as well. So those are a lot of things that we put on top of our body, on, on, on top of our skin. And then, of course, internally with the juicing and the eating the, the raw foods, the vegetables, the teas, all those things internally, then in turn helps for the external. And then, you know, of course... God is good, honey. We just, <laughs> you know, so we, God is just, God is good. And, and, and I always say thank you for keeping me preserved. That's, <laughs> I mean, you know, and then a lot of water is also good. I mean, I know she has struggled with water, but you know what? I drink a lot of uh, coconut water too, because coconut water is extremely hydrating for the skin and also for the body. Those are my tips. Okay. Yes, some. Um, well, I mean, pretty much you've pretty much covered almost everything. I'm I'm just really careful. Like, yes, I was uh, very much addicted to um, high fructose corn syrup and refined sugar, so I'm very very careful um, to be to not ingest any of that. Um, my skin, however, when I was young, I I suffered with eczema uh, and asthma. So I was, um, I had eczema everywhere. There was a point in my life where I had eczema in my face every 30 days to the point my lips were swollen, my eyes were puffy, everything. I would always have a rash in my face. And and, and out of ignorance, uh, I had a little doctor friend, well, he was a PA, and he would just give me some cortisone cream. But for anybody out there that feels like that is an answer, let me please say to you, it is not. Because no. too much of that stuff on your skin can really torture you for the rest of your human journey with what it can do. So being clean, being conscientious, um, have, getting enough water, um, and, and make sure that you're using good products and not a lot of horrible, harsh chemicals on the skin has really helped me. Um, I'm, I'm blessed in that um, my mother, uh, uh, some of I think what's going on in, in my face, especially, my mother didn't have a lot of lines. Um, she was a um, melanated woman, d darker uh, melanated woman, but she had a good face. She died at 93. Um, so I'm sure uh, uh, some of it is genetics, but more of it is lifestyle, I believe. So, and she pretty much said what we do, you know. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. And there is... Um... Those of you who are asking for the link to the website, there's a link in the chat that I just placed there with an awesome discount code that Khadija made for you all for 10% off. So it's in the chat. So if you're interested, you can just cut and paste that and um, use it later. Uh, so Chef Babette, you just mentioned the word addiction. Mm -hmm. And there are people who are in this meeting who are hearing both of you and they want to make the change. They have tried to make the change and always end up going back what I have found, it's usually something involving sugar um, mm -hmm. that they're going back to or that's calling them. In your interview uh, with Dr. Price, you all were talking about other addictions. And then he mentioned how food is the new addiction that people don't talk about as much because we have to eat. And so what are both of your thoughts about food addiction and what are some perhaps strategies that people can use um, to overcome it if it's something that they're dealing with? And how does someone know if they have a food addiction versus they're just being stubborn and don't want to make the change? Hmm, that's a good question. I um, have been addicted to sugar in particular. Um, I was addicted to crack cocaine at a time in, in my journey. Um, and so I, I do understand that for all change, it comes from within. Um, um, to, to be able to get off of a chemical as powerful as crack um, from a mere conversation with oneself. Um, as in, I've been smoking crack all day and then a voice, I go through a piggy bank and a voice comes to me and be like, oh, so that's you now. You a piggy bank girl. 
and 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 then the next voice saying I'm not doing this anymore and never going back um then I know that I can get off of refined sugar you understand so that 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 a uh, uh, chemical addiction um was was very powerful it so few of us can overpower chemicals so that's why it's very careful it's it, it's in necessary for us to stay as far away from those chemicals that we do not have to ingest as possible but when it comes to refined sugar they put it in everything and so yeah. that is why you have to be so careful and i know most of us pick up a package and we're always accustomed to looking at nutritional facts if we look at anything what we need to look at when we pick up that package or that bag of processed anything, go to the ingredients and look at the ingredients because they are putting sugar in everything because it's so addicting mm -hmm. and it is not good for us. They have documentaries on high fructose corn syrup and how it is manufactured and how they put chemicals in that stuff that could make you lose a limb if the chemical got on your skin. So it's it, that's why knowledge. Knowledge is power. We're not in control of our food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're trusting. We're going to the store making people rich out there. They use less chemicals in the food in Europe, in Russia than they do right here in the United States. The pharmaceuticals need us sick. They need us dead. And that is what they do. They do not heal us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm just saying that it's very, very, very important for us to understand why we need to nourish ourselves, the human species, in the manner in which we do. I know I've said it over and over, but at 73 and being on this journey since I was turning 40, that's 30 some odd years, ain't it? I was about to turn 40 when I started. I know this part of what I am talking about. Please pay attention to me. If you can stop ingesting the refined sugar, the dyes at least, and read the in, in, in ingredients on the back of the package, you're going to be helping yourself and your family so much. Mm -hmm. At least that. I totally agree with her. And, you know, like she said, they sugar is in everything and it is drug. It, it's, it's probably worse than cigarettes. It's probably worse than crack because it's too accessible. You know, at least even when I used to smoke cigarettes, I was like, all right, I'm not buying a pack today. I'm going to, right. you know what I mean? It's like, if I just stayed away from that, or if people were on the patio smoking, I just won't go over there. But like she said, sugar is in everything and it is addictive. So that's why for me, my way to combat it is with one, doing detox cleanses at least three times a year seriously at least at least three times a year and the bitters this tonic this tonic that i was talking about this antiviral tonic oh, even though it's called antiviral tonic but it is the bitters and see and that's why you don't have a lot of foods or things that are bitter because they want our palates to stay sweet and yes. to keep raving the big liters of soda and yes. they want our palates to stay that way but i guarantee you when you start changing the palate with bitter, not only is going to help the digestion, but actually I was reading that the bitters also help the receptors in your heart mm. as well to stay healthy because the body is like, oh, bitter. Okay. That it just changes whatever that is that happens in our bodies to help with healing. You can only heal the body with bitter. You cannot heal the body with sweet. So if you incorporate bitters, I do a, a shot of this tonic every morning, okay? Whether I'm on a fast or not, I just do that because what it does is that it helps my taste buds from, because usually in the morning, that's what you want first is that sweet, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, something <laughs> sugary or something. But if this is going to curve it right off the bat, right? 
And it's going to also help me to like do more intermittent, intermittent fasting with it because it's not, I'm not going to feel as hungry. You see? So that's how I kind of combat that. Now, mind you, there is, like I said, not perfect, not a hundred percent. Going to want a cookie sometime. Okay. I'm going to want a chocolate chip cookie or something. But if I commit to at least three times a year, if you break that down, then I'm not allowing that to build up to turn into diabetes, to build up to turn into things that's going to start to deteriorate my body. It doesn't have a chance to, you yeah. see, because I think that a lot of times with the illnesses, it's because it's been over time and over year of the same thing. And the body is like, hey, I can't. I can't function like this. So well, then it starts to break down. It it's neglect. And it's because neglect. You, you bathe, generally, it's nothing for us to hop in the shower every day. You mm -hmm. bathe outside all the time. But how many of you actually cleanse the inside? Yes. You know? That's a good point. And so those are the things that, um, and then, you know, of course, for me, Taking CMOS daily also helps because that's helping to regulate things. But I mean, you could, you know, people are like, well, you know, is it fruit in it? Do you got some sweet in it? Blah, blah, blah. I don't put any sugars in my CMOS for that very reason. I say, well, if you want something, you can put it in yourself. But when you buy those different sea mosses and drinks and things like that, that's already heavily sugar, you you don't know what how much sugar they're putting in. At least if I add it to a smoothie, I know how much I'm putting in it, right? Yeah, you can add, and it so, to you. add it to you. I, I, I much prefer you to know I put in four apples than to get this juice and you don't you don't know how much uh, sugar or substitutions that whatever they put in it. So do it yourself. So those are the, those are the things that I would suggest. Definitely, this tonic is like the truth. <laughs> right. I I swear by it. I, it keeps the boogeyman away. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. And so thinking about the idea of people who are transitioning or um, people who are proud that they have given up the meat and dairy. And now perhaps they don't consider themselves plant-based, but maybe use the label vegan, or maybe they do call themselves plant-based, but they're eating a lot of the unhealthy plant-based or vegan foods and the um, perhaps fake meats and things like that. What are your views on those foods and what 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 is their place in the plant-based space? Is there a place for them or are they just as processed as other processed foods and we shouldn't be eating them? Processed food is processed food. Sorry, over and out. Yeah. When you come to stuff I eat, you get real food. Real. Okay? Real food. Every potato that's diced, I dice it. Every tomato that's diced, I dice it. I don't feed you out of a box. And the only can that comes through there is organic, uh, um, what do you call it? Tomato paste and organic... Um, jackfruit because these people are in love with barbecue jackfruit <laughs> so um and and I, i'm just i'm just telling you i have trust issues and not with my husband but i have trust issues with the powers that be that deal with our food i do not trust them i'm sorry i don't believe them and i don't trust them so if I can pick up what I know is a tomato, and especially if it has an organic label on it, I prefer that over anything else. Um, they've made a mess. And I say they, because I have a right to say they. I did not mess up the water, the air, the soil. I did, I did not do that. But the people that are making money in the industries that have made a mess of our water, our air, uh, tearing, uh, uh, destroying forests, all of the, all of the, that life was here for life, and not for somebody to make dollars and cents. And I, I just feel like I prefer to know what I'm eating than not. That's just, it's just me. And and she makes a good point because 
of course, the more living things that you eat, you know, the more live food, food, fruits and vegetables, the better for your body. Now, as I said in the beginning, how I got started, you know, when I when I first shut everything down and was just eating the fruits and the vegetables, I was just like, oh, I'm so bored. This is not good. You know, it's like it was it was boring to my taste buds. I was used to taste and food. And I said that she had me to do substitutions, which that is how I was able to be here to this day. And, and, and it just helped you to get a good start. Now it's okay as a start, but then you don't want to stay there because I tell people all the time, you can be a very unhealthy vegan. You can be a very unhealthy uh, vegetarian. If you loading up on cheese, if you loading up on bread, if you loading up on sweets and the processed things and every meal that you eat is processed, is, you know, the, the uh, baked eggs and the fake sausage and the fake hot dogs and you know all that if everything if every one of your meals is processed that's a problem you eat just because it's not real meat doesn't mean that it's not doing things to destroy your system and not allowing your body to function to heal yourself you have to you have to ingest the life so one good rule that i i tell my clients is think of 80 20 80% of your food needs to be living. Mm. That is real fruits, real vegetables, right? Mm -hmm. 80%. The 20%, okay. You can have something. But if you're gonna have, if you're gonna have a a breakfast that's gonna have veggie sausage and the um, what's that egg stuff that they make? Whatever that, you know, the fake the egg, fake. the fake eggs and the Whatever that if you're gonna if your breakfast is gonna just be this big, lunch can't be that too. And dinner can't be that. Right? You need to have a real salad with some, you know, whatever. So 80, 20. 20% 20 of your uh daily food or meals can be, you know, uh, maybe one sweet or you know, or some fake uh, something that you might need to make yourself feel a little fuller, but 80% needs to be living things. That's I my, I think that maybe we should, um, once you give up eggs, maybe you just ought to give up eggs. Mm -hmm. True. But then that's what I'm saying. But some people still want to have like simulation of, I understand, but I'm just talking about once you really commit to a lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, when when I drove through the Popeyes, that was the last time. I don't eat it anymore. Yeah. You know? And especially you figure out that what you're eating is worse than just eating the egg. Maybe True. you ought to just stop eating eggs. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a way to think about it. And it is, I think that, and also too, I think that when you do think of it as one thing that helped me was saying, this is my new way of life as there opposed to this is my new diet. Right. Because it's something that happens in the brain that as soon as you say a diet or I can't do this, something happened. I don't know what, they'll, they'll tell you mm -hmm. psychology, whatever. that's the very thing that you'll want. That's the very thing that you, because you feel like you're you're subconsciously depriving yourself. And so that's the very thing you want to have. So I just started saying, this is my new way of life. My new way of life. Too, what about just the, the knowledge that you have of what you're ingesting that is just not good for you? What if, what if it's just about us raising our level of consciousness and understanding that to be my best human me, there's a certain way that I need to nourish myself. Mm -hmm. And some of this other stuff, I don't still eat pig intestines, y'all. They I don't even know if they have any uh vegan processed um uh, chitlins. But I remember being <laughs> there stuck. I cleaned the shit out of chitlins then boil them and ate them. I don't want no chitlins no more. So I ain't looking for no vegan chitlins. 
I don't want nobody to package up and nothing look like no pig intestines. I don't want no doctor telling me my iron is low and I need to go eat somebody's liver. I don't need that. I don't want no fake one. I don't want no real one. So you just change your, your change. mind because you have the power to change your mind. You have that power. And the only reason you ain't changing your mind is because you don't want to. You don't want to change it because mm -hmm. you can change it. You can change it. You just using a whole bunch of excuses not to change it. And, and hey, truth and is everything. That's the truth. That's real. All talk right, everyone. So we're doing a pulse check. If Chef Babette and Miss Khadija just spoke to you, please put a one in the chat. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. That's, that's a real talk right there. I don't, you know, listen. And change also, your own anyone... mind. I mean, it's true because I mean, when I decided I wasn't going to smoke anymore, I quit cold turkey and it ain't been back since. And that's been whatever years ago that was. Yeah, what about me with the crack? I don't Everybody even think change it. my mind. Change your mind. But I I think we all get to a point where, you know, enough is enough, you know, and you like I, I'm not doing this anymore. You some know, some of us and, do, some of us just use excuses. It's just hard. I just love cheese. I always that the last thing I can give up is the cheese. <laughs> And did you know that there is an enzyme in cheese that is almost kind of addictive as sugar? It makes you want. But cheese is usually the last thing to go, girl. It's hard. It's hard. Now, like I said, I keep it real in one hundred. It it is that is the hardest thing. That was the that hardest. That was a rough thing. one, wasn't it? So, ooh, that was the hardest thing because some of my favorite foods have to do with cheese. Cheese, you know? right? But you know, and so in that in that respect. I need to like pacify my brain to find some fake cheese that'll still act like it want to milk. So I will, you know, but I do know that there are other alternatives. There are cashew cheese. There's things that I can do that I can make myself. You actually. can make yourself. I, yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't need, again, you learn to make it yourself. You, you still, you don't have to worry about it. Like she said, paragraphs of things. I know that if I put in the blender, the cashew cheese, exactly. it doesn't that's exactly what's in there. That's exactly what's in there. I love so. it. All right. So we got our ones in the chat. And if anybody has had plant-based or vegan chitlins, please um let us know if that exists. Because we know I there's the plant-based oxtails I think they probably um, that have come did. around recently. So if, if anyone's had the chitlins, please let us know in the chat. Um, as we start to kind of wind down, if you have any questions for uh, Khadija or Chef Babette, please put it in the chat. Even if you asked it already, please put it again since we've had some more comments. Um, since we have the sea moss queen here, and she has kind of told us a little bit about what we should look for in the sea moss, um, can you elaborate more, especially if they're not ordering it from you, should we be buying it dry and making it ourselves? Or if we're not buying it that way, how should we? purchase it, what should we look for? And Chef Babette, if you can share with us how CMOS has helped in your life and all the different ways that you use it as well. Yes, so of course, um, hopefully you are ordering it from me um, <laughs> because mine comes directly from St. Lucia. I have no middleman. It literally is from the ocean to my blender, take it through a special blending process to the jar. And I don't know if you guys have seen, I have one new flavor i say flavor but it's really not a flavor um but this is blue spirulina with acai goji and blueberry this is excellent blue spirulina is excellent for pulling out the heavy metals out of your body heavy metals is what causes cancer um so if you are getting it dry that's fine just make sure that it is sourced from a place that you know and it's hard to know exactly where play things are sourced from i mean there's a lot of you know, I get emails all the time about, you know, I'm from China and we can get you this cheaper. But I know that the kind of sea moss that I want to have grows in warm waters and majority of the time in the Caribbean. Right. Um, now, yes, there is Cronus crispus, which I talked about that before. The difference between uh, Guinness Gracielia and Cronus crispus. Cronus crispus does grow in Ireland. 
only in the winter time on a rock. But as I said before, that particular um, Cronus Crispus, I use in my tonics, I use in the teas, I use in that way because for me, it doesn't blend smooth enough. And I like my my CMOS blended very smooth. So the Guinness Gracielia, which is what I use, is the one that's better for me in terms of making it into a gel. Okay, so that's the difference in that. So yeah, you wanna make sure that it's, if you're gonna do it yourself, that is sourced right and this you know it comes from there like i said our sea moss comes directly from saint lucia no middleman all right and that is what i take it through to put it in the um gels and i also want to tell y'all too so this is our new product we got our new handmade vegan plant-based soaps because again like i said anything you put on your skin you should be able to eat this one has got like real kale avocado it's got hibiscus dried hibiscus these are so excellent and moisturizing and they last a long time because again i'm very i don't know if it's just women on here but uh this i'm very sensitive in that area and as i know a lot of women are and so therefore i have to put things on my skin and on my body and near there that are naturally based so that it does not cause any kind of yeast or you know sensitivities or any kind of things like that i'm extremely sensitive and i know a lot of uh, women that i know generally are very sensitive so these soaps are all natural um this one is the wild orchid um like i said this one is uh east of greens and then we have the um citrus sensation it's got ginger real um um orange dried oranges lemon peels sea moss um and all of those things are really good for your skin so again all of our products as you know are pure raw organic um the herbs are root herbs pure raw organic root herbs um they're great for the inside um, I got an immunity T1, which is great if you have, get cold, flu, COVID, whatever it is, one pot, pour it in there, add your water, drink that, kills all of that stuff. Of course, we got the tonic, which like I said, is great for combating that sugar, um, that sugar craving, because you're going to be giving the bitter receptors a chance in your body. Because we don't, think about how much stuff you eat that's bitter. Nothing. We don't. That's the other part that we need. We need that bitter, you know? Um, so anyway, and then of course, like I said, we got the butters and we got the things for all of that. So well, as awesome. As it, Jeff is concerned, um, to be perfectly honest with you all, um, I don't, um, internally, I don't really have too many issues. I, I don't have any issues. And that's the honest to God truth. I usually feel pretty awesome every day. Um, so sea moss, the bitters are a part of the lifestyle. I'm not ingesting large plates of food. I'm 73. Now y'all know even, even, even meat eaters that are my age don't eat as much as you used to eat. I don't, my husband and I do not eat a lot of food. We're not bulk people. I can make a handful of nuts a meal. I don't have to sit down to massive plates of food. As long as I know that I am covered nutritionally, that is where my mind is at 73 years old. Mm -hmm. um, so of course, everything that, that earth and sea wellness uh, has available, I use. Um, I cannot, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, and I had the sea moss and it made me feel like I was floating in the air. I'm not getting ready to tell you that. <laughs> I'm just telling you that everything that I ingest, I want it to do what is good for me and the whole. Mm -hmm. And sea moss and earth and sea wellness, the products do that. So um, yeah, that's pretty and 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 because I have learned to practice self-love and self-care, um wow, wow, I'm just so blessed that I am feeling good. Yeah, these little 
muscle aches and stuff like that that's that's one thing yeah. however if if you're if you you know I, i'm not dealing with diabetes i'm not dealing with high blood pressure i'm not dealing with any of the common illnesses that so many of us are challenged with because of a and and more of it is due to a lack of knowledge mm -hmm. and that is not a sin it just means that we need to do better in certain areas Sometimes we need to not pay attention to what D.L. D. Hughley is saying on Instagram. And maybe we need to go to Earth and Sea Wellness and see what Khadijah is talking about. Yeah. So I'm just saying, sometimes it's all about sharpening who we are so that we really, really, really understand how to practice self-love and self-care. And let me say real quick too. So Chef and I, we also, um, we have, two, well, there's two eBooks on our website for uh, sea moss, salad dressings with sea moss. That way you can incorporate it in your everyday things. Yes. This, you know, the, and then we also have one that is just sea moss, but different recipes using the sea moss, incorporating it. Cause people be like, well, you know, how can I need, how can I take it? So these are just different things. Um, there are ebooks on there. As soon as you um, pay for it, then it, you can just download it right into your computer or whatever your device is. And it's a great companion. It's a great companion um, to have. And, and that was out of people saying, I need to know how to make this. I need to know what to do. So that's what we did. So we have that on there. Also, we have 30-minute uh, consultations available on there now. So you probably will see this looks very different than the other website that I had before. Um, there's also a, a, new, a more in-depth one if you need someone to kind of hold your hand through a 30-day type of situation. Um, but look around you know, um, and see what the things we have on there and what's available. And of course, each of the um, CMOS blends offer different medicinal properties to you. Just read it and see, or if you know you're not sure, like I said, get a consultation and then I'll be able to direct you to exactly what you need. Awesome, thank you. And so for these next questions, if possible, you can give a brief answer. Um, so what are the name of the two books, Chef Babette, that you mentioned at the beginning of the presentation? And in addition to those two, um, are there other books that you would recommend for people who are on this wellness journey from either of you? Well, for definitely you want uh, volumes one and two of uh, Fit for Life mm -hmm. by Harvey and Marilyn Diamond. Fit for Life, volumes one and two. Volumes one is going to teach you how to combine your food properly. I mean, to the point where you understand you have categories of fruit, sweet, acid, subacid, and what should be eaten together. Most of us do not have that knowledge. And the other book is The Mucusless Diet Healing System by Professor Arnold Errett way, way before his time. But he understood that most illness, you can give it the name that you just inflamed. Period. And that's, yeah, and that's that was Dr. Sabi's also, his message. Yeah, with, yeah, he was into you know, that too. Yeah, the only disease there is is mucus because when you rid your body of excess mucus, because of course it, people it, say, it, well, it, you gotta it, have it, mucus in your body. Exactly. Excess exactly. mucus, when you rid your body of excess mucus, then disease and things like that cannot live. Virus can't live. Bacteria can't live in a mucusless um eating things that help your body to be more alkaline keeps wow. you to be more mucusless. Another, Great. another too, you want to make sure you check out some of the old ones, especially, I don't know how many of you are already plant-based, but check out the China study. Those are old school books that have, these are some of the books that I read um, as, as I was um, getting on this particular journey. Um, but, but let me just say right now, for those of you who, are, 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 are transitioning and you're like, oh, how do I make this and how? Man, I'm gonna tell you, use the tool Google and just ask for a vegan recipe of a whole bunch of anything. And you make those recipes your own, okay? Mm -hmm. Just make them your own. It, does, it's, it doesn't have to be so difficult. 
It does not. Anyway, Khadija. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, you said it. That's I definitely. It. I saw somebody that ha I don't know. I know you're probably going to order, but something that popped up about a, a somebody who's uh, have a seven year old child or something. I, it, it flashed up. I don't know if that was somebody, but if they were, what would they? Yes, ask? I didn't know if that was too specific for you. While I go to that question, there's a quick question about what's included in the detox bundles. Oh yes, yeah. so the detox bundle is going to be the tonic, um, the pure tea, tea and um, the sea moss because in the um, 30 day, uh, and I just made that bundle. So I hope it's in everything is in there, but um, in the, the 30 day cleanse, we did the tonic, it was the tea. And then it was, you choose two um, sea moss gels because one sea moss gel will last you two weeks. Um, so you would have two of those, um, but I, I think on the bundle, I don't, I don't know if I put one or two, but the tea, you probably need like two of those and like two of the tonics, two. but you can also choose to do two weeks if you wanted to do, you know, if, if, if 30 days is too long, you know, one, one bottle of tonic is going to last you one week. If you're taking one shot a day, this is an eight ounce bottle. Okay. The tea, like I said, you can get two rounds in this. So this could probably last you a week, maybe a week and a half, because you can always uh, strain it and put it in um, a glass mason jars and put it in the refrigerator. And, um, you know, after you do your two rounds, so one could possibly last you like a week and a half. It's just going to depend on you and how much you drink, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but I do suggest you do two uh, cups a day. Now, all of those different instructions on the 30 day cleanse is still on the uh, Instagram page. Um, where chef and I were talking about it. And then also uh, some of the different posts, I post one with that had a green goddess dressing that was from our ebook that didn't have any sweet in it because that was a thing we were trying to like not do any sweets and it was eating all raw vegetables, no fruits. So it's kind of like a cleanse fast in a way. Um, but even when you fast, you also are doing your body a really good, great service because when you fast it's like it allows the body to take care of all those things without you know the interference of all these outside things that we're eating okay so it's kind of a cleanse fast because we're not just eating full foods you're only eating raw vegetables you're drinking the tea and you're taking the tonic and the sea moss okay that's all you're doing during the day if you get too hungry you just eat more raw vegetables but that's pretty much it and as much as you can do it like i tell everybody if you know if you can only do one week that's one week that's going to be great for your body um and if you can go further go further just take one day at a time you know sometimes when we see all the way to the end we go like oh we get overwhelmed one step one day one day at a time that's what you do good advice Great. Any suggestions? Well, this is a question you were referring to. Any mm -hmm. suggestions for a seven-year-old who gets colds often with symptoms like diarrhea and throwing up? Stay away from dairy. Well, that, so then the first thing with a seven-year-old, now, you know, we always have to say we're not doctors and all that, but the first thing I would say is what is their diet? And so yeah. What's if, diet? if dairy is in it, I will cut that out because you they probably have dairy. some, yeah, they have some sort of allergic reaction to it or their body is rejecting it. A lot of times when we're having those kind of symptoms, period, that's saying our body is trying to tell us, hey, we don't like that. Hey, no, nah, this is not working for us. OK, and just because, you know, they're seven, you think, OK, well, they should be able to eat cereal and milk and all those things like that their body may be different. All of our bodies are different. So I would just start one, cutting back the things that like a dairy or, sh you know, heavy sugars. Um, please make sure I don't, you know, I know a lot of seven-year-olds have a lot of different diets, but I would first check with their diet, you know, and see what that is. And then once you do that, then there may be some other suggestions like, you know, this immunity tea um, is something that um, the whole family can, drink this tea and it can help with that. But if you're having constant things with viruses and things like that, I would not suggest the antiviral tonic for the seven-year-old. That is going to be way too strong for their system or either like, uh, they're not going to want it because it's too bitter. They're not going to want it. So I would just, <laughs> I, I would just say cut back on the dairy first. 
Um, definitely could try them on the gold sea moss, like one teaspoon a day. And that'll help with like ridding the body of the mucus and sea moss is also antiviral, um, antibacterial, um, help with that. Um, this tea is something that, you know, can be diluted enough that they can drink that as well, because it's going to help kill viruses, um, that are in the body as well as boost the immune system. So, um, uh, without knowing his specific, um, you know, health conditions and things that you're already given, that was what I would say. But I would say if you want to know more in depth, then please set up a consultation so that I can get more specifics. Um, but that's just off the top from what you said. And from what I've experienced, I was a really sick kid. So um, my mother did give me a lot of refined sugar dyes, um, uh, all of the uh, cancer causing dyes. Um, and she gave me dairy. And um, I was, I had earaches, uh, like I said, asthma, eczema, um, and always struggled to digest my food. And uh, once the di diet was cleaned up, all of that stuff disappeared, literally. I know a lot of those, uh, I'm not saying you're a kid, but I know a lot of kids be eating them hot chips and the, the, the hot Cheetos, the, the Cheetos. But have that, you seen have you seen the ingredients in a bag of those spicy? Have that's you good. have you seen the ingredients? They all got red number forty five. But a Boy. bunch of name, words you can't pronounce. It might be two paragraphs of words you can't. Why would you those, give a human something like that? Those chips are banned in other countries. Thank so, you. Those chips are horrible, and kids eat them for breakfast here. They eat them for breakfast. Well, first of all, they have a horrible menu at school. I don't even know what they're doing. Not even real food. Not real foods. My daughter used to come home, and I just be like, "This can't be your first day. They only give them fifteen minutes to wolf whatever it is down. That's not enough time. And then on top of that, what they have is horrible. It's not even food. It's not real." Well, but but the problem too is if you're giving people food because of the recommendation of the doctors that practice medicine nowadays, then then you're going to be giving people food like the doctor tell me to eat somebody else's liver because I need some iron. You do not have to eat another another uh, uh, being's liver, which is a filtering org organ. You're telling me to ingest another animal's filtering organ to get iron. Iron comes in food. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't. <laughs> so parents, please be careful with the dairy and the processed foods and the dyes and the preservatives. If, if, if you, you're giving, you feeding your child out of a package, a box or a package, and it's got a paragraph of, of of words you don't know on this box and a two paragraphs of words that you don't know on that bag. How do you know all those chemicals should even be consumed together? How do you know that? You don't even know what the chemicals are. And then you feed, and then my mama, when the McDonald's, when McDonald's showed up, it used to be fish and chips on Friday. But when McDonald's showed up, it was McDonald's. I, I ate McDonald's every Friday, Big Mac. I'll never forget it, but you got to be careful. And I was still sick. You understand? My mother didn't know. She had no clue. I was just a sickly kid. That's all she thought. All right. Um, next question. Besides diet, any topical suggestions for eczema? And do you sell anything on your website? Yes, actually, I was just talking with someone the other day. I did a consultation with, as far as the eczema. Um, of course, anything on the skin is also a condition inside. So, uh, you know, you definitely have to work on the insides too. But the green tea mint is the one that I usually suggest for anybody to have eczema. Um, that's that's usually been the one thing that everybody really uh, uh, loves. And also this kale avocado which is moisturizing the kale this is very healing soap because again a lot of the soaps and stuff that you're using have those different chemicals and then it's going into the skin and it's drying it out right 
Eczema is a condition of the skin that needs that moisturizing. It needs uh, minerals and vitamins. And so again, if you think about feeding your skin the way you're feeding, like we're talking about feeding the inside, then you'll start to see better results. Um, of course, having um, sea moss in your daily diet is going to help too, because that's also going to be hydrating, feeding you the minerals on the inside. So you have the inside outside effect. Um, if you you know, can't do anything, I definitely would say do a purity tea because this is cleansing the blood. This is cleansing the liver. Okay. And those organs. And again, what causes skin is a the liver is a condition of the blood and the blood is a condition of the skin. So, you know, it's kind of like you have to do all of those things. And I even told her, I said, sometimes things get worse before they get better because, you know, just like the earth, you know, when we have all this imbalance that's happening, the earth is, you know, we got crazy weather here. It's because the earth is trying to balance itself, right? It's trying to get back in balance, but there's so many things that are happening and keeping it off balance. That's why we have all these crazy tornadoes and things like that. Same thing with the body. When the body has been imbalanced, it has to come back in the balance. And in order to do that, it may have to you know, things may have to look a little crazy while you're trying to get it back in balance. But the more you do it, it'll get back in balance and then it'll come to a calm. Okay. And that's when you see most healing. So that's what I would suggest. Great. Um, the next question, someone says their mom is 70 and this will be her first time using CMOS. Which one should she start with? And can she add it to her smoothies? And before you answer that, the person who had the question about the honey and the sea moss, please ask it again because I can't find it in the chat. So um, the first honey. question is about the mom. Yeah. Well, um, uh, honey is, you know, I hate to say it, but this people always say, you know, that's bee vomit. Bee vomit. <laughs> so it, it just depends. If you're vegetarian, then yeah, you can have honey, obviously, um, because you're, you know, but uh, honey is, 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 comes from the bees so if you wanted to use agave that would be better um because that is not uh, that's plant-based so it just depends on your diet i don't know what your diet is um but you can use agave uh, just a little bit but don't overuse agave either because again that's still sweet right um if you can especially with the purity tea i think i saw somebody say what's in it you know it's got yellow dock it's got burdock it's got um uh, yellow dog burdock, it's got elderberry, it's got cloves, it's got dandelion. Those are all herbs, root herbs that are good for cleansing the organs, the blood, and the liver. So it's slightly bitter. It's not real, real bitter because I put the elderberry in it, um, but it, it is slightly bitter. But I can tell you the more you can take it without putting a whole bunch of honey or agave or whatever in it, the better for you. Well, I okay. do have something to say about honey. And, you know, honey, everything that they sell you that they say is honey is not always honey also mm. understand that honey is for the bee it is regurgitated nectar it's not really even for the human consumption and the process by which they go through getting the honey smoking the bees is cruelty sorry and you don't need to ingest it and babies can't even ingest honey. So if it's so darn good for you, why can't a baby ingest it? It's mm -hmm. not good for you. It should be used on the outside of the skin and not used internally. That is where I am, and I ain't changing that. Sorry. They have date syrup. No, you can no also, honey. You can use date syrup, okay? You can use date syrup, and you can also use, like I said, a, a little agave or maple syrup. Maple syrup. Maple that's... syrup works, and it's not people. It's it's that a thing like your... agave right now, which that's normally the sweetener we've decided to use in the restaurant. But um, it's still it's it's all like she said. It's all sugar. So that that is for us to try to back away from the the sugar. I, mm -hmm. I hate to call it refined sugar, but they doing something to put the syrup in the bottle. Um, so. It's a it's an it, it's a challenge for myself, so I can't be the one up on the sweetener. Cause if I get too jacked up, I'm probably gonna pull out a teaspoon and give me a squirt of agave and, and eat it. That's how jacked up I am when it comes to sugar. I, I, I have to be extremely careful. But the honey, 
No. I use yeah. day syrup a lot though, uh, for me. You and that's something you can just literally get you some dates. Yeah. The seeded oh. ones, not seeded ones, okay. Put those uh, uh, with some water and right. just like let them sit for a while. That you would be surprised. Them up. That water will turn into like sugar, and you just blend that up, and that can that's you do that. At least I know it was these three dates right in it that made my sweetener. Right. Right. <laughs> like, you right. know, right. Right. but that's exactly why I don't put any sugars in any of my sea moss gels you know the colors are not flavors when people say well, what flavor flavor means like you know there's some artificial flavoring or any kind of sweeteners no this is just as they are you know like the ingredients that are in it are no sugars even on the acai goji and blueberry that is the freeze-dried powder so that it's the free-dried freeze-dried fruit so that it's not sugar it's not coming from like anything concentrated or anything like that um because like i said that's generally most people's problem is too much sugar <laughs> so all right great and we have a couple more questions um the next one is about hair growth is do you have any suggestions for that and um with castor oil um uh, massages green smoothies juices um is there anything any essential oils as well that you would recommend for hair growth um now I don't have any in the in the store but you know of course when you are feeding your body nutrients and vitamins and minerals that's going to help feed your your roots of your hair right as far as like putting something now cloves is something that's really good and the cloves are in a lot of the teas that I have right so just even cloves itself also helps to stimulate scalp um, and hair growth. Um, now I use, <laughs> actually, you know, I just started using, you know, they always have these hair oils on Instagram every five minutes, but whatever this one was supposed to be one that Oprah used. Okay. So I just started using that. Okay. Putting them little drops in my scalp every day. You know, actually I do see some like new growth. Oh. I do see some. So, you know, you know, I don't know. It's because I mean I think hair growth is kind of a total package, just like skin. You know, you can't just try to fix one thing. You kind of have to do everything if you're having issues in those departments, you know. Um, I did have some oils and stuff that I and I homemade stuff that I there's a lot of stuff I do, I make myself and my mom was using. She's like, My hair is getting long. Uh <laughs> so but I don't have anything just yet in the store. Maybe eventually I will. I will be launching some skincare, um, some actually skin washes that's natural that I use um uh probably in May, but not actual hair stuff yet. Well, I think that that is a, an awesome question. And um, I, um, some years ago, I had a head full of locks, really long locks. But because I worked in the restaurant, I always pulled them up. And that's how the, these scarves came into play. However, on one side of my hair, the tension from the locks and the wraps made it thinner on one side of my hair. Now I've used castor oil um, to assist with growing, but I don't do a whole bunch um, with my hair. It grows pretty good. I'm, I, I keep the tension off of it as much as possible. However, if, if you're doing this on a daily and pulling, you're still gonna lose some hair. It's gonna, it's, it's just, the rubbing, rubbing of the cloth. This is not silk. It's not satin. It's cotton or whatever, and it's it's gonna it's gonna make it thinner. So I have a head full of hair, usually in the top, but my edges are generally thinner. I don't have a one hundred percent four one one on helping your hair grow. I just I don't have that information because I am a woman and challenged myself with certain areas on, on my head that are not, not as thick as they used to be. So. I Great. Thank you. Um, Chef Babette, can you tell us what a typical day looks like for you um, in terms of when you wake up, what you eat, when you exercise, hmm. et cetera? Yeah. Well, generally 
Um, I have a body clock. Um, I am generally awake between uh, 1.45 and 2 a.m. Um, and I get right up. Uh, it's usually a bathroom run. And this is literally how my day goes. Um, I have um, three, um, uh, I take Orlo, which is, um, what do you, come on, help me, Khadija. Orlo mm -hmm. is, uh, is the, um, the vitamins. No, it's from the, um, it's the fish. I don't use fish, but it's the. Oh, it's the, the omega three. Omega three. So, okay, so the first thing I do right by the, my bedside table is I take three of my or Orlo capsules because I understood that my omega three levels were extremely low, but because I don't eat any kind of seafood or anything like that, and I'm not big on supplements. So I just make sure I snatch those Orlos as soon as I get up. Some of my tonic, before I even brush my teeth, I'm taking some of the Earth and Sea Wellness Tonic. Then I'm getting myself together so I can go to the gym. I'm usually in the gym for about two hours. And if I have to go to stuff I eat after I leave the gym, I get myself together so I can go to work. I generally work at stuff I eat. It's usually about eight or so hours. And then um, I'm busy. So I sometimes I'm hooking up with my manager. We have video shoots, just depending. But I usually have a full day. However, if I have a shorter day, I really do try to speak to Babette and say that it is okay for you mm. to sit your ass down right now. <laughs> Because I am that person. I get the case of, this is not healthy either. I get guilty if mm -hmm. I'm not busy. I'm saying. And, and you have to be able to take time for self and shut it down. So I do have to have a conversation with myself, but that is truly it. When it, in terms of eating, ingesting food, when I'm in that restaurant and I'm prepping, sometimes I'll just have juice. Maybe I, it's, come on, y'all know I've been in that restaurant. We've had that restaurant since 2008. You know I am tired of that food, don't you? You do know that, right? Y'all, somebody say amen. Amen. You, you know, I it, usually if it ain't a salad, I just be like, I just don't even know what I want to bring home to eat. So I'm, I'm nourished a lot at work and at after a certain time in the evening, six o'clock in the evening, I am not ingesting any more food. So uh, I just make sure I keep a refrigerator full of juices so that if I want anything else later, it's either some tea or some juice. But that's usually the day in the life of Chef Babette. Very, very simple, but I make sure that I take care more. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Well, as we start to close um, oh. for the evening, I mean, we could have a sleepover if you guys want, and we could just keep talking. But, great. Uh, uh, but yes, um, I just want to, uh, Chef Babette, you talk a lot about the power of now and being in the moment and really um, having gratitude for this moment and the moment that we have. And I want to share with you all, one of the reasons that we're here tonight is because of one of our amazing Heart Smarts participants, uh, Ms. Yekka Carlisle who sent me a random um, message one day and she said, can you bring Chef Babette back? And I'm like, I am not asking her to come back again because you all were here. And I told you all this when we um, were prepping at the beginning of this meeting. And so um, Chef Babette, uh, Ms. Yaka just loves you. And I just wanted to surprise her because she just reached her 100 pound weight loss goal last week she lost 100 pounds and she just posted her plank this morning she was just doing a plank on her no instagram way. page no. and so whatever you, you want to say to her miss yaka you can go ahead and and tell her how much you love her oh <laughs> my goodness i'm so surprised Chef Bebet, i do i love you and i'm telling you i was inspired i knew you were coming on so i was like i'm gonna do my plank today i'm gonna report i'm gonna record my um my plank today, this past challenge with the 40 days that we um, did on a juice challenge, um, my energy level was, was rocky, but in the exercise classes that we do, I was able to start doing my star jacks and I was able to um, do 
my full plank I not on my you. knees my full plank so I proud and you are such an inspiration thank you so very much and thank you for coming yeah. girl you know this this has really made my evening thank you sweetheart so much so very much you know we are we we are family right we're one in this ain't nobody out doing nobody we're just all at different places in the journey you understand mm -hmm. what i'm saying mm -hmm. and if i can just be any a tiny bit of light for the whole just let me be that light then i am i am on my purpose Yes. Oh, you are a light. You oh, are a light. I am you. so happy that you're here. Oh my God, you thank did you. that plank. How was that plank, boo? Oh, uh, it was. It was. It was good. It was a good plank. It was good. I was able to post it so other people. I it love was a good you. One. Yes. Oh my God, that yes. is so awesome. And and please, the way that I I never stepped out of my lane as it pertains to planks, and even today. I will. I'll, I'll do as much as I can and and add a little bit more. And the, and and before you know it, you know what I mean. I love before it. I know, I'm gonna be Chef by that. Yeah. yeah. No, you gonna be. You gonna be you. You gonna be the best you, baby. You, you yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Oh my God. Blessings to you. God bless. God Thank bless. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Yaka. And so, Kadisha, so Chef by that. Thank you so much um, for being here tonight. Do you have any final words? Um, and and I will say before you answer that. We've had our presenters on, as I shared at the beginning, who shared very technical information. I wanted tonight to be more of a family meeting because Chef Babette, you did tell us last time that we are family now. So I wanted this to be more of a family conversation and really kind of a push for those people who know they have to make this change and needed to hear something tonight, which I know they did, um, that's gonna help them kind of move forward in this journey. So are there any final or closing words that you'd like to share um, with everyone here as we close out for the night? Well, after that, I really would like to just say something to all of you. You're blessed. If you have an opportunity to hear any of the um, the upcoming guests, but Dr. Montgomery, I, I, Dr. Montgomery got my heart um, because this brother is actually healing people with, with um, raw food, plant-based. He, he's very solid on what he believes in. And he truly is healing. He's healing people as an MD. And I appreciate that so very much. But my final words is um, just be the best you that you can be on yes. this human journey. Okay. At, at every opportunity that you have to raise the vibration, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's real low on the planet right now, raise mm -hmm. it. And, mm -hmm. and and just remember that we are no different. That which created you created me and all of it. So it's like a piece of art. If you draw a picture, can't nobody separate you from that picture. That picture becomes an expression of you. And, and, and we are mere expressions of that intelligence that created all of this. And, and it has nothing to do with aesthetics. Your beauty comes from the inside, your heart. That is where your beauty starts. I don't care what none of it, because I got a girlfriend that a coffee pot broke and slashed her right across her face, but it didn't do nothing to the beauty of that heart. Yeah. So we can all get hung up on how somebody look if we want to, but when them looks cease to exist, your heart is forever there. So love you, love the whole, and you be good to go. Well, you know, her words, I, I, those are my words, okay? Uh, and all I will say, too, is that um, each of us have our own uh, story that we started somewhere. You know, Chef started with something that started with her. And for me, I had something that started with me, that started me on this journey. So hopefully tonight, if you haven't been, that this is a, your start. Right. And that you take whatever day that it is that it clicks for you, whatever day that that is, that that changes, that's your start. And no, where, no matter where that is in your life, it's OK. You know, hers was at 40. Mine was at 23. Yours might be at 53. It doesn't matter. Wherever that day is, just start and keep walking and God will, you know, 
if that is your journey that you're supposed to take, he will he will put present the things, people, and uh to you on your journey and your path to make it where now you can look back and be doing webinars where we're talking about it's been 30 years, it's been such such years, whatever, because I didn't know when I started that it was gonna be here, you know. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying that wherever that is that is starting for you, start that, you know, and that's that's a great thing. And and my final word is make sure y'all go see recession fruit <laughs> it's oh, on can I just say anything you yeah, guys gotta good. watch recession fruit you can go on tubi <laughs> let me tell you and you it's gotta great. watch it more than one it is so funny she is so good and she is so excellent i swear to god i'm so it's proud a, of her thank you it's a feel-good movie it's for the whole family and it's yes. fake and that's the thing like i said I not only in my products and the things to help people heal, but I also uh, write, I wrote, produced and starred in it because I, the message that came to me, um, that God sent to me was to write this. And hopefully that message will resonate with you because again, healing is not just the inside. It's also how we think it. It's also how we present ourselves into the world, like she said, and our vibration. So it's all of those things are healing for me. So I hope that you guys will enjoy it and watch it. Tell your friends, Don't tell your you. families. You. Oh, yes, there it is. That's actually the QR code. But, you know, the, the poster on the Tubi is a little different, but it's called Recession Proof. Recession Proof. And the song at the end, the title song, was the first song that I wrote. And so it's also available on iTunes. It's very inspiring. So, again, that's my stuff. <laughs> Awesome. I really thank appreciate y'all having us on here, though. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you both so much. And thank you. Khadija for working with me. I always say you all see the final product of us coming on the screen smiling, but there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. And Khadija, it's been a pleasure working with you and thank yes, you for your patience. Um, they initially were going to be the kickoff speakers. Then I thought it would be more powerful to have them close us out, which you all have seen it has been. Um, Chef Babette, as Ms. Yeka said, we love you so much. And you are just so kind and awesome and just so generous with your time and your story and your information and everything. And, and we just love you and hope you continue thank to thrive you. and do all that um, you've you. been doing. And Khadija, thank you for being yes. part of the Heart Smarts family. And um, we great. hope to do more with both of you in the future. And hopefully we can meet you all one day when we have the Heart Smarts in-person conference um, at some point. So um, just really quickly, for those in the Heart Smarts Lifestyle Program, we will meet very quickly after this, just a quick check-in. Um, for those of you who are looking for a community that will support you as you go through your wellness journey, um, perhaps consider Heart Smarts. And if you want more information, if you're not part of the program, you can go to heartsmarts.com and fill out the contact page and I will get back in touch with you to see if this program is a good fit for you. Um, for those who have missed any of the presentations, they will be posted by the end of this week on the Heart Smarts YouTube page. And I think, and Dr. Oh, Teddy, I just want to say you are doing such an amazing job yourself. I just love yes. the community yes. that you created. For you. Yes, I'm yes, glad. the community that you. you have created and that you have committed to, you yes. know, helping people heal, which is why when we connected the first time, I was like, oh, yeah, whatever, yes. you know. Just call me. It's uh, it's all good. You know what I mean? Because I think that that's, that's very important. And I'm glad that you have created this community of people that can tap in when they need to. Thank you so much. I receive it. Thank you. Yeah. And I was going to say, um, for those of you who would like more of Chef Babette's energy and talks and all of that, she is all over YouTube. Um, the <laughs> videos that I recommend to start with are Dr. Bobby Price. And then also the Ritual podcast is an awesome interview um, as well. But she's, there's so many of them. And so even if you give yourself one a day, um, it'll help you as you go through your transition. So thank you all very much. We're going to ask you again to visit Earth and Sea Wellness and support um, Ms. Khadija and Chef Babette in their new initiative. And finally, I'm going to ask all of you to come off mute and just uh, share your gratitude and thanks. Thank you all for joining this evening. Thank you for um, being with us for our Heart Month 
events and we hope to see you in March. Thank you. And don't forget thank to get so a different so God bless you ladies. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. 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 Thank you.